Hi everyone, in this video you saw problem 9.52 from the book Sins in 9th edition Thermodynamics. Here is the statement of the problem 9.52. An air standard diesel cycle has a compression ratio of 16 and a cutoff ratio of 2. At the beginning of the compression process, air is at 95 kPa and 27 centigrade, accounting for the variation of specific heats where temperatures determine the temperatures after the heat addition process, thermal efficiency and the mean effective pressure. Before starting this uh, problem statement, let me draw the ideal air standard diesel cycle In the ideal diesel cycle, we start from the compression. In diesel cycle, we start the cycle from the isentropic compression from process that is taken from process 1 to 2. This is 1, and isentropic compression taken place and reaches to 2. The volume, since it is compression process, the volume decreases from V1 to V2 and the pressure increases from P1 to P2 and then the next process that comes is the constant pressure heat addition process. So here is the heat addition taken place that is Q in from 2 to 3 and then again isentropic expansion 3 to 4 and then the final process that is taken place is, is at a constant volume and heat rejection is taken place at this from process 4 to 1 heat rejection is taken place and we can say that it is Q out. So this is the ideal diesel cycle. This is the final ideal diesel cycle PV diagram. I hope you understand. If still there any confusion, you can ask in the comment section. Here the volume is V1, and remember the volume V1 is equal to V4, and here the volume is V3. Now come toward the data that is given in the statement. It's a compression ratio that is equal to V1 divided by V2. It is given that is 16, and the cutoff ratio that is equal to V3 divided by V2. Cutoff ratio is equal to and it is equal to 2. That is given in the statement. Now Next is the compression process. At the beginning of the compression process, the pressure P1 is 95 kilopascal. Temperature T1 that is 27 centigrade. Convert into Kelvin at 273 with it, and it becomes 300 Kelvin. Some constant that is used in this statement is the isentropic index for the air that is 1.4 cp value that is 1.004 kJ per kg and a cv value that is 0.718 kJ per kg kelvin what are the requirements in the statement is the maximum temperatures of the cycle that is occur at the t3 when heat addition is taken place the maximum cycle temperatures we will observe at t3 thermal efficiency of the cycle third one is the mean effective pressure now come toward its solution consider the process one to 2 that is isentropic compression i can say that t2 divided by t1 is equal to v1 divided by v2 to the power gamma minus 1 and the value of gamma is 1.4 rearrange this equation for t2 we can say that t2 is equal to t1 times v1 divided by v2 into gamma minus 1 v1 divided by 2 is the compression ratio it is 16 so i can say that v1 is 300 after solving this on calculators you will get the t2 value and it is 909.4 k1 next consider the process 2 to 3 now consider the process 2 to 3 that is constant pressure heat addition process mean to say that the pressure at p3 is equal to p2 then we can say that p2 v2 divided by t2 is equal to p3 v3 divided by since p3 is equal to p2 this will cancel out and also multiply both sides with t3 t3 multiply with v2 divided by t2 is equal to v3 so when i shift this v2 divided by t2 to the right side of the equation that become its reciprocal of itself i can say that t3 is equal to v3 divided by v2 multiply it now just put the values v3 by v2 is equal to the cutoff ratios and that is given the statement it is and the value of t2 that is also determined that is 909.4 after multiplications with 2 we will get the value of T3 that is the maximum temperatures of the cycle and it is 1818.8 Kelvin. This is our first requirement that is asked in the statement and now consider the process 3 to 4 that is isentropic expansion. I can say that T4 divided by T3 is equal to V3 divided by V4 into gamma minus 1 as we already said that V1 is equal to V4 so in term of V4 I can write V1 and also the cutoff ratio V3 divided by V2 is equal to 2 and I can say that V3 is equal to 2 times of V2 and also the compression ratio is equal to V1 divided by V2 is equal to 16 that is the compression ratio now put the values you can say T4 is equal to T3 times what is V3 that is 2 times of V2 divided by V4 is V1 to the value gamma minus and V2 divided by V1 is the reciprocal of the compression ratio in simple word I can say that T3 multiply 2 into V2 
2 divided by v1 is the reciprocal of the compression ratio the value of gamma is 1.4 minus 1 now just simply multiply this whole term with the value of t3 that is 18.8 kelvin After simplification, this all terms you will get the value of T4 and it is 791.7 Kelvin. Next is to find the heat that is supplied during constant pressure heat addition process that will be equal to Cp change in temperature T3 minus T2. What is Cp value that is constant? It is, is 1.004. After multiplications, you will get its simplified versions in terms of the heat that is supplied and it is 914 kilojoule per kg. Next is to find the heat that is rejected during constant volume heat rejection process that is taken from process 4 to 1. This is uh, the process 4 to 1 where heat rejection is taken place. out it is simply equal to Cv change in temperature C4 minus T1. Value of Cv is 0.718. T4 is 791.7 minus C1 that is 300. After simplifications you will get a Q out. Next to find the network output that will be equal to Qn minus Q out. Just put the value of Qn and Q out and you will get the network output. On subtractions, you will get the network out that is 561 kilojoule per kg. The second requirement of this treatment is to find the thermal efficiency and is equal to the network output divided by the heat supplied. The network output that is 561 divided by the heat that is supplied 914. So also multiply with 100 to get its answer in percentage that is final thermal efficiency value you will get that is 61.3. The third requirement in this statement is to find the mean effective pressure. Before first we will find the specific volume at the inlet node PV is equal to Value of R is 0 0.287, T1 is 300 and T1 value is 95. After simplifications, you will get the specific volume V1 that is 0 0.906 meter cube per kg. And we have also given the compression ratio V1 divided by V2 is equal to 16 this is the compression ratio. Then on the basis of that we can say that V2 is equal to V1 divided by 16 times V1 value is 0 0.906 divided by 16. You will get specific volume at V2 0 0.0566 meter cube per case. The specific volume at before the compressions and after the compression has been calculated. Now we can easily calculate the mean effective pressure. Mean effective pressure multiply and change in volume is equal to the network out. What is change in volume? That is V1 minus V2. What is V1? That is 0 0.906 minus V2. That is 0 0.0566. And the network the network produced that is 561 kJ per kg. Divide 561 with 0 0.85. You will get the mean effective pressure. And it is 660.5 kPa. And this is our final answer of this statement. I hope you understand. If still there is confusion you can ask in the comment section please subscribe my channel if you haven't subscribed thank you so much